Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to us, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. I want to thank those who sent one-time donations to support.greatdetectives.net. Also want to thank uh, Lisa, who mailed in a donation to our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And you can also support the show as a Patreon supporter, patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Richard Diamond. The original air date, April the 19th, 1950, and this one is Who Shot the Messenger? National Broadcasting Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Oh, 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 swell. Hold everything, I'll be right there. Okay, okay, just let me get a robe on. Coming, coming. Yes. Yes. Yes, there's nothing like stepping out of a nice warm shower into a nice hot murder. The only thing in sight was the body of a man lying on his face. I didn't have to get any closer to see that he was very dead. Then I heard someone running down the front steps and out of the street, so still being the kind of guy who's always interested in seeing what a killer looks like, I went down the stairs and out into the street. I landed on the sidewalk just as the sedan pulled away from the curb and dove into a hole in the traffic. I only had time to see that there were two people in it. Didn't even get a chance at the license. Well, a white terry cloth robe can be a little conspicuous at 11 o'clock in the morning on East 51st Street, right off Madison... So I shuffled back up the stairs and put in a call for Lieutenant Walter Levinson, 5th Precinct, Homicide. But it seems as if I was a little late. A neighbor on the way to the... uh, Well, a neighbor on the way down the hall had stumbled on the dead one in front of my doorway. Now, generally, a body in front of my door would be left alone to sober up. But this one seemed to be bleeding, so just as a precaution, the neighbor had called the police. All I could do was just stand around and wait for them. Know it, Otis. Wouldn't you know it? Finally got to be right in his own building. Yeah, Lieutenant. And she said it was right in front of his own door. That's around this corner. Oh, what'd you say the name of the woman was who turned in the alarm? Uh, Myrtle Tibbles. The apartment next to his. That's right, Otis. And she's a big snoop. Huh? I heard that. What's that? Myrtle Tibbles. Now listen, Rick. And if you've got any questions, officer... Ask me no questions, I'll tell you Oh, no... shut up. Otis, go question her. Me? Yes, you. Go ahead. I... Lady, I know everything you're going to say, and a lot more. Oh, then come in, Captain. Hey, did you hear that, Lieutenant? Get in there, Sergeant, and question the big snoo- uh, lady. Uh, yes, sir. Snoop, eh? Well, Rick. Well, Rick. What kind of a bit is that? I suppose you're going to tell me you had nothing to do with this killing. Walt, I was then taking a shower when this gentleman decided to get himself shot in front of my door. I was singing, too. Would you like to hear what I was... No, thank... Hey, wait a minute. If you were in taking a shower, how did you know he was getting himself shot? He rang the doorbell first. Oh, sure. He wanted to let you know there was going to be a murder. Listen, blubbermouth, I was taking a shower. I stopped taking a shower. The doorbell rang. I went to the door. I opened the door. Dead man. I ran down into the street after the killers. What about the shots? I didn't hear any. Must have used a silencer. Well, you say you ran after the killers. Was there more than one? Two. I don't know who pulled the real old trigger, but I chased two people down into the street. Did you recognize them? No, they didn't leave any calling cards. Ah, descriptions. Man and woman. Now, that's helpful. License number? Too fast. 
Got lost in traffic. In other words, all you noticed about them was a little less than nothing. Mm. I'm surprised you didn't forget and leave your head hanging in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now, by George, Lieutenant, that was a real dandy, that was. Oh, cut it out, Rick. Come on, let's take a look at the corpse. Well, have you forgotten? You just sent it in to question Myrtle Tibbles. Not Otis, I mean this one. You better be specific. I've known a lot of coroners to get pretty confused when Otis was covering a homicide. Hmm. Some kind of a messenger. Yeah, band on his cap says speed messenger service. Here's his receipt book. Only one entry, Richard Diamond, apartment E, 53 East 51st Street. Nothing else. Should you want any more? I'm honored. Now, what the devil could he have been delivering? The reason he got shot, probably. Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah Myrtle. Uh, oh, oh, Lieutenant. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, Go uh, ahead and ask him, Otis. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, young love. Uh, Myrtle, uh, uh, Miss Tibbles wants to know if it's all right if I stay for lunch. Why, I think that would be real nice, Sergeant. How long do you think it will take? Uh, how long will it take? <laughs> uh, not long. Well, that's fine. But before you sit down and start feeding that fat face of yours, what would you suggest we do about this body in the hall? Well, I'll tell you, Lieutenant. Otis! Uh, uh, yeah, Lieutenant. Get out here. Uh, coming, Lieutenant. Uh, thanks anyway, Myrtle. Uh, well, where to, Lieutenant? Oh. Uh, how, how about the speed messenger service? Right. Just as soon as the coroner and the boys get here and take over. Uh, you want to come along, Rick? Well, sure, sure. The dead man was trying to deliver something to me. I'd like to know what was important enough to get him shot. Sure, let's get going. Uh, Diamond, don't you think you ought to change that robe? Uh, Walt... Yeah, I know, but what are you going to do? Oh, gee, I only made a suggestion. You don't have to get sore. Oh, we're not, Sergeant. He can wear the robe for all I care. I only... Well, thank you, Sergeant. I don't give a darn if he looks silly. Otis. Just because I make a suggestion... Sergeant. Yeah? Will you do me a favor? Well, sure, Lieutenant. Shut up! So while Walt tore Otis to pieces, I did a quick change. And when the coroner arrived, we climbed aboard the squad car and headed for the main office of Speed Messenger Service. While Walt was getting the address from headquarters in the car radio, Otis sneaked on the siren. So in less than ten minutes, we pulled up in front of a building at 31st and West End Avenue and barged in. You on duty here, miss? Yeah. Trouble? What makes you think there's trouble? When a cop car pulls up in front and you two jump in here like a couple of bill collectors, it figures. Trouble, see? Ah. A woman's intuition. <laughs> wonderful, simply wonderful. Tell me, dear, did your service send a messenger over to 53 East 51st Street, apartment E? About an hour ago. Why? What was he supposed to deliver? I don't know. I don't remember that good, see? Oh, well, try. I don't get this. What's wrong anyway? Well, dearie, your messenger ain't anymore. Yeah, shot to death. <gasps> what? Mm, now try to remember what it was. Oh, that... Mr. Cartwright! Hey, hey, Mr. Cartwright. Well, let her get Cartwright, Walt. Maybe he can tell us something. Yes, now what in the oh, world? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, Johnny, he's dead. He's dead. Yes. Those are police officers, see? They said he was shot to death. No, no, just be calm. Let me get this straight. But I told you, see, it's Johnny. All right, all right. Now go in the back. Get a drink of water or something. Well, yes, sir, but I just can't believe it. I am Mr. Cartwright, gentlemen. Well, that's nice. Are you in charge here? I am the manager. Now, what is this about one of our messengers being dead? That's right. You any idea what he was delivering to 53 East 51st this morning? Well, I... Why, no, but it, it should be in our record book. You'll have to forgive Miss Ogilvy. She gets very emotional. Hmm, does she? Well, let's see the record book. Oh, it's right here. Uh, here you are. Now, let's see... Uh, uh, there, it was the first delivery this morning, as you can see. 53... We'd uh, like to know just what he was delivering. Oh, well, I really couldn't say. I, I don't even remember what the item looked like. Well, who sent it? Uh, uh, yes, yes, that I can help you with. Uh, here it is. Uh, last name Clark, first name Paddy. Uh, in other words, a man named Paddy Clark. No. Yes, uh, odd first name, isn't it? Mean anything to you, Rick? Oh, well, something. It's a little vague. Name seems familiar, that's all. How about you? I don't get a thing from it. Any return address? Uh, no, uh, just his name with instructions to deliver it to a Mr. Diamond at this address. Well, uh, don't you remember whether it was a package or a crate of bananas? Oh, dear, we what... get so many things in here to be sent out. Uh, uh, yes, Otis, what do you want? Uh, 201 over on East 48. Thought you might like to know. You better take off, Walt. 201's your department. Fine, fine. Two homicides in one morning. I'll finish checking here and go over to my office. You can get in touch with me there. Okay. Come on, Otis. Let's go. Uh, uh, Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah. You can use the siren. 
My, you officers certainly are busy, aren't you? Yes, we officers sure are. Now, uh, how'd you like to trot out that girl again? Maybe she's calmed down a bit. Oh, certainly. Uh, certainly. Uh, feel any better, Mr. Ogilvy? Oh, yes, sir. Much better. Uh, this gentleman would like to ask you a few more questions. Oh, the good-looking one? Oh, sure. Uh, if you're through with me, officer, I have some... Uh, you go, go right ahead. Go on. We'll get along all right. Hello. I'll be beautiful. Honest, dearie, I-, I can't help you a bit. I don't know nothing. Oh, sure you do. Weren't you here when this Patty Clark came in? Well, honest, I-, I don't remember, but... Gee, you got the most... But uh, you do remember what the messenger was supposed to deliver, don't you? Hmm? Well, what was in it, I don't. It was just a thick envelope, white with... Listen, honey, I'd Anything like to... unusual about the envelope? I could remember for you, but I really can't. We deliver so many things every day, but let's talk about something else. Gee. <clears throat> well, after all, there was no reason in the world why she should remember one particular envelope, so making like a good cop for Walt's sake, I scribbled down her name and address. Then headed for my office at the corner of 51st and Broadway. I stopped in the lobby for my morning supply of cigarettes and was about to step in the elevator when a big fat hunch, that's right, hunch, grabbed me by the arm and turned me back into the direction of the tobacco shop. That's the place I've been stopping at every morning for the last six years. And it was run by a little guy with a twitch in his right eye. A little twitch and a last name, Clark. And the first name, Patty. Uh, Back for something else, Mr. Diamond? Yeah, yeah, Max. Uh, Where's Patty? Oh, he called up the other day and says he was going out of town for a couple of days or so. Oh, is that it? I missed him the last couple of mornings. Well, you know, he got three stands to look after. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Say, tell me, where's Patty live? You want to see him? Mm-hmm. Got a little business deal I want to talk over with him. Oh, sure. You know Patty. Anything to make a buck. Here. Yes. This is address. Uh, read it. Oh, fine, yeah. He got a phone? Yeah, yeah. The Skyler... Four, nine, nine, seven, oh. There. Thanks, Max. One of these days, I may even buy a cigar from you. Funny how things like that can happen sometimes. The name of Patty Clark had seemed familiar, but I couldn't place it. Only because I'd been doing business with him every day for six years and didn't think to look that close. I grabbed the elevator, went upstairs to my office, and put in a call to Mr. Clark. Yeah? Uh, Patty? Who wants him? Oh, no. Rick. Hello, Walter. What's new? You know perfectly well what's new. What do you think I'm doing over here? Well, now, let me guess. Riddle homicide? You knew that's why I come over here in the... Now, wait a minute. Yes, Lieutenant. How did you get this phone number? Patty Clark dead? The deadest. Now, how'd you get the number? I, uh, looked in the book. It's not in the book. It's a hall phone listed under the apartment name. I asked my Ouija board? Pow. Okay, okay, Groucho. Patty Clark owns a cigar store in my building. Why under the sun didn't you tell me that in the first place? You said you didn't know him. I said the name was vaguely familiar. All right. How was Patty killed? Shot. Coroner's on his way. Look, I'm not far from your office. I'll be over as soon as he gets here. Mm. I'll have a candle in the window. Bye. Mm -hmm. The happy people. Mm -hmm. Something wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. Come in. Just filling my lighter. Okay, Agnes is alone. Hello, Mr. Diamond. Well. And in came Agnes. And this was the type of girl easily recognized. About five feet five with more curves than the World Series. And the one thing that really set her apart from the rest, a great big 38, complete with silence. Her boyfriend took out a cute little forty-five and leaned against the door while Aggie swayed over to my desk like a mull cobra. All right, Diamond, let's have the envelope. Honey, honey, could you point that thing the other way? My skin is beginning to crawl out of my shirt. I want the envelope, Diamond. And if you refuse to give it to me, I really wouldn't mind killing you. You know, I, I think I'd like to give it to you if I, if I knew what you were talking about. I hope we're not going to have to play games, Diamond. Well, uh, something like post office might not be so bad. I, I... Drill him, Aggie, and we'll search the place. He's got to have it somewhere. I'll handle this. I want the white envelope Patty Clark sent you this morning. And I thought you too got it after you killed the messenger boy. Now, I don't know what you're talking about. Seems to me I chased you into the street. So you climb into a car and take off. The guy in the white robe. So if you two knocked off the messenger boy, you must know I don't have the envelope. 
Too bad, but I didn't, didn't even get to the door until after you'd shot him. We didn't shoot the messenger. What was in the envelope? You know what was in it. Go on, Aggie, show me ain't kidding. Oh, shut up. We didn't shoot the messenger, Diamond, but we are going to get the envelope. Where is it? Hey, that siren's pulling up out in front. Uh, why didn't you search the messenger? You had a gun. You didn't have to worry about me if I showed at the door. Well, we got an envelope off him, all right. Empty. Hey, what are you doing, Paul? Taking a look out in the street. Hey. Police. Call car. Two guys coming in this building. Some of your friends, Diamond? You say the envelope was empty? What if they are some of his friends? What if they found Patty? I told you to shut up. Why'd you kill Patty? You knew he'd already sent the envelope. Knock him off, Agnes. Quiet. Hey, somebody getting under the elevator. You keep your face shut, Diamond. Paul, get over behind the door. What are you going to do? Diamond, you stay right there at the desk. Say one wrong thing and you and a couple of more get there. My, my. Hello, Rick. I got over here just Good night, see... Lieutenant. Good night. Good night. Oh, what you mean is good afternoon. Ooh. Believe me, Walt, I meant good night. <laughs> NBC is bringing you Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Yes, dear sweet little Agnes had slipped out from behind the door and let Walt have it right behind the ear. He went down like a 16-pound shot in an elevator shaft. Then Aggie and her playmates started backing off. They opened the door and Aggie, darling, pointed the business end of the silencer about halfway up my hand-painted tie. Whether or not she would have shot is anybody's guess. But along about that time, a very dear old friend stepped up behind her. Drop it, lady. The other cop. You can drop yours too, Sonny. Oh, Otis, bless your little pointed head. You fool. Why didn't you look first? Oh, I forgot. Forgot? Okay, over against the wall. Keep your hands up high. Hey, how's the lieutenant? Oh, uh, oh, he'll come around. Walt. Mm. Oh, Walty. Mm -hmm. Which one let him have it? Agnes. The dame? The other one's named Paul. Come on, Walt. Oh. oh, come on, Walt. It's spring again. You know, birds and bees and all that sort of rot. Ah, that's a good boy. Now, now, try and sit up. Oh, my head. What happened? What happened? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Walt, you've been crowned queen of the 5th Precinct. Who did it? No, no, no. Don't look at Otis. He's been reading his Tom Swift, Rived in the Nick. Look, there. Huh? Them? Them. And Otis saved the day. What did he do? Wander in without his collar and scare them to death? Agnes, uh, he, uh, she's the one with the sweater. Agnes crowned you. Look, uh, where did these two figure, huh? Oh, they're the pair who ran out of the building after the messenger was killed. Put the cuffs on them, Otis. Yes, sir. Okay, you put out your right and you put out your left. And I'll be in Sing Sing before you. And I'll be in th to get him. Now bring him over here. Go on, lady. Okay, keep your hands to yourself. Here's the artillery, Lieutenant. 38 Special with a silencer. This 45 auto. Mm, silencer, that's enough to book him in itself. All right. You kill the messenger? No. How about Patty Clark? We don't know who you mean. They know. That's your story. Well, we'll take him down and book him. Happy now, Rick? No. I want to know who has the envelope and what's in it. Envelope? Yeah. The girl at the messenger service finally remembered. Come on, let's take these two down to headquarters. <laughs> Still not talking. Did you find anything in the files? Uh, both have records. Guy's Paul Barrows, Agnes is his wife. One conviction apiece, May 1938, suspicion of passing counterfeit money. Uh -huh. Convicted, did time, parole. Oh, you got a fresh address on them? They've been living in Flatbush. Otis went over with some of the boys to check. Good. And here's some fancy news. Just yesterday, the FBI started watching all of Patty's cigar stores as possible fences for phony money. Yeah? Well, then it ties. Come on, I want to take a look at Patty Clark's room. right there beside a couple of bags he'd packed for the trip. Oh? Four slugs in the chest, no struggle. Anybody in the building hear the shots? No, and the 38 your little girlfriend had wore a silencer, remember? Hmm. When did the coroner say Patty was shot? About six this morning. What's that? Oh, a little address book. Patty must have used the speed messenger service more than once. Look, see here? Hmm? Here's the address and phone number. Hmm. Now, Walt, let's go over and take a look at Agnes and Paul Barris' place in Flatbush. See what Otis has found out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Detective. Well, thanks, Otis. You drop your watch? Turn up anything? Uh, no, nothing much. What do you mean by nothing much? Well, nothing. That's what I was afraid of. Hey, is there an address book around here anywhere? Over by the phone. Why? Just getting my jollies, Otis. Love to look at new numbers. Now, see if Speed Messenger Service is listed. Yeah? Hmm. Yeah, right here on the back page. Oh. Well, yeah? Patty was killed at six this morning, huh? Right. Six this morning, you know, I wonder when he gave the messenger service that envelope. You know, the one addressed to me? Well, the place wouldn't have been open at six this morning, so it must have been sometime yesterday. That's right, and back in his room, his bags were all packed. Well, I think he wanted to make sure he'd be out of town before I got that envelope. I'm way ahead of... Hello, Henderson? Levinson. Find any plane or train reservations for Patty Clark? Well, if you didn't, I'll show you where I keep that bottle of lighter yes. fluid in my office. Uh, does that include me too, right. Diamond? There's only one bottle, Otis. Rick, Patty had tickets for a plane to California and then a boat to the Philippines. Well, I'll lay you even money that Agnes and that Paul character didn't knock off the messenger or Patty Clark. What? Mm, all they wanted was that envelope. Envelope? Envelope? That's why they came after me, and Patty didn't have it. No? Then who has? Oh, to stop sneaking up. Now, Rick, what about the counterfeiting angle? Otis, uh, Otis, go over and check on the speed messenger service. Mm. See if anybody could have pilfered that envelope and put another in its place or something. And be sure to call me. Why don't we do that? On account of we're going back to the precinct and talk to Agnes Barrows. Waiting outside. Good. And here's something you like. Ballistic says the 38 your Aggie was carrying is not the gun that killed Patty Clark or the messenger. Swell. Okay, show them in. Hello, Aggie, darling. I'm sorry I didn't shoot a hole in your head. <laughs> Isn't she a doll? What do you want out of us? We ain't got nothing to say. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Now, we know that Patty Clark was fencing counterfeit money for you two. Now, ain't that peachy. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Walt, get the phone. Yeah. Hello? Uh, Lieutenant, I'm down at the speed messenger service. Well, congratulations, Otis. We thought you'd get lost. Walt, let me talk to him. Sure. Otis? Yeah? Mr. Cartwright there where I can talk to him? He's right here. He isn't? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, he's right here. Well, if Cartwright isn't there, put the girl on. Cartwright is here. He's standing right next to me. She isn't? She? No, he. Cartwright's a he. Can't you get anything straight? They've skipped? Huh? Whole place cleaned out? No, there's plenty of people... Oh, now, wait a Hold minute. Hold the phone a second. They've skipped, Walt. I'll pull what out a general. Said, said, skipped? Why, Cartwright. those dirty... Oh, shut up. Didn't you hear it? Didn't you hear what he said? They skipped. How do you know? You're going to take his word? Anderson, put out a general on Cartwright and his girlfriend. That dirty, no good, double crossing Cartwright. Look, kiddies, that guy's framed you two from the very first. Why don't you talk? The state will make it easier for you. Agnes? I don't know. I don't know. Sure, tell him. We've been getting the run around ever since he got oh. us in this deal. Hello? Okay. Okay. Hey. Hold it, Otis. But, uh, I said hold it. Go on, Agnes. Well, I, I don't know whether Cartwright killed him or not, but, but Paul and me sure didn't. What about that envelope that Patty Clark sent to me? What was in it? Counterfeit dough. Some of the stuff we made with Cartwright. Why send it to me? Oh, because Patty got sore at Cartwright and wanted to blow the racket wide open. He was crazy to send it through the speed messenger service. Sure he was. Yeah, I think I get it now. When Cartwright found it out, he killed the messenger and had you two there just to make it look like you'd done it. Sure, the lousy... Uh, Otis. Hey, listen, how long can a guy hold... Otis, for? Otis, Otis, you want to be a hero? Huh? How close is Cartwright standing to you at this minute? Uh, he... he's about a foot away. Well, just reach out oh. and slap the cuffs on him. Really? Yeah, and something else, Otis. What? You may use the siren all the way home. <laughs> It's nice to have you here with your face in one piece. Yeah. Lucky, ain't I? <laughs> Look pretty. Why don't you sing it? Well, I... Oh, no. Mm, let me get it. It's got to be Walt. Yeah? Rick, I just wanted to let you know that Cartwright was behind the whole setup. Printed the stuff right down the basement of the Speed Messenger service. Rick? Uh, Harold Abernocker speaking. Owner of the largest hog ranch outside of Little Rock. You don't say. Sure, Dad. What's the matter? You need an ear horn or something? 
Rick, so help me if you don't stop this. My name's Harold, bud. Harold. That's it. That's my name. Now, you just hang on and let you mash your molars with a missus. I don't want to mash my molars with a missus. I want to talk She talks to louder you. than I do. Used to call the hogs a shop, you know. Lula Bell? Lula Bell. Howdy. <laughs> Having trouble with your hearing, huh? Now, Helen, listen. Calling me, Harold? No, no, friend. My name's Lulu Bell. Maybe you got the same trouble like my Uncle Zeke. He used to stick a plug of tobacco in his ear overnight and always forgot it. Oh, my God. Yeah, we thought he's plumb deep till I started calling the hogs and it shook the tobacco loose. Now, you just relax and I'll unplug you. Oh, this is ridiculous. Work for Uncle Zeke. Hold on to your teeth. <laughs> Find any loose tobacco? <laughs> he hung up. <laughs> Give me the phone. Good old Walt. I'll drive him out of his mind. Fifth Precinct, Lieutenant Levinson. What? Oh, no. Now you listen to well, me. Don't get loud with me, Grouchy. I just called up to find out what happened on the case. Huh? Now, look, I just told well, if you... you don't want to tell me, okay, be a sore head. I'm not going through that apple knocker routine again. What are you talking about? Lula Bell called Otis all the way in from a stake out in Flatbush. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. If you don't want to keep me in on the nose, just forget it. Gosh. Well, what's the matter now? Maybe, maybe I did have the wrong number. What a bunch of idiots. Okay, so you had the wrong number. What about the case? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it, it seems that Cartwright Here, was Helen, really the one mm-hmm. behind the whole setup. Killed Patty Clark. We've got to stay with the happy people. Have your fun, live in the land of joy. Stay with the happy people. Face the sun, life is a Christmas toy. Down through the endless ages, tears have been contagious. And take it from me, that misery is looking around for company. So stay, stay, stay with the happy people. Don't wrinkle your brow, it's strictly out of style. Just stay with the people who love to wear a smile. Helen, is Walt still talking? Wait a minute, Oscar. He really had blood in his hands. He's been cleaning yeah, up on that condom for years. Well, I might as well sing another chorus. <laughs> We've got to stay with the happy people. Have your fun, live in the land of joy. Stay with the happy people. Face the sun, life is a Christmas toy. Down through the endless ages, tears have been contagious. And take it from me, that misery is looking around for company. So stay, stay, stay with the happy people. Don't wrinkle your brow, it's strictly out of style. Just stay, stay, stay with people who love, love, love to wear a smile. We arrived at, Otis says there must have been more than 100,000 in phony bills. We got the plates and everything. You don't say. Yeah, that just about ties it up. Well, Walt, I'm sure glad to have heard all that. Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, someone wants to say hello to you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Walt? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Lieutenant Levinson was played by Ed Begley. Also in the cast were Virginia Del Valle, Wilms Herbert, Lucille Meredith, Michael Ann Barrett, Carlton Young, and Frank Gerstle. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Tonight's show was written by Blake Edwards, and the entire production was under the direction of Jack Johnstone. Dick Powell currently may be seen in the motion picture version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. There's more thrill-packed listening for you throughout the week when NBC presents other great adventure mystery dramas. Nightbeat and Dangerous Assignment are two action-filled shows you'll want to make a steady date with every Monday night over most of these NBC stations. Yes, on Monday, travel the nightbeat of the Chicago Star with newsman Randy Stone. There's poignant adventure as Randy searches the city at night for an unusual and intriguing story. Also on Monday, join Brian Donlevy in Dangerous Assignment. 
As Steve Mitchell, soldier of fortune, Don Levy journeys to the corners of the earth in search of adventure, fortune, and fair play. Yes, now on Monday, hear two great adventure mystery programs, Night Beat and Dangerous Assignment, on NBC. This is Eddie King inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this same time, when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Green Gill Theater stars Ginger Rogers tomorrow night on NBC. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. I have to confess that during the final scene where Rick was revealing the murderer, I thought he was just messing around with Sergeant Otis on the phone because he does that sort of thing. But this time it turned out to have a practical intention. So that was a nice little twist. Also, I love the song at the end. Just a very nice, happy song. All right, well, now on to listener comments and feedback. Deanna writes in, Can someone please tell me how? how many Richard Diamond private detective radio episodes there are out there. I thought I'd heard them all, but I'm now wondering if I've missed some. Love, Dick Powell. Well, Adiana, good question. And there are a total of 103 separate uh, broadcasts that uh, we do have available to listen to. Now, those are not all unique episodes because there was a CBS run that was reruns with no new episodes, and some of those will be repeats of programs that we played previously. But there are 103 broadcast out of the 164 that were actually aired. Though we haven't run into the really big uh, gaps in the series, which occur in the Rexall and Campbell-sponsored runs, which we'll be getting into shortly. Joey responds to a comment I got on episode 2151, uh, or excuse me, 2147. Love the comment about the, uh, from the son about how his father made him laugh about the father's references of lines from old-time radio shows and the son not knowing what he's talking about. I've quoted lines from old shows trying to be funny, and my daughter is just thinking I'm an idiot. I've had a few moments, I don't think people have thought I was an idiot, but they haven't quite known what I was referencing. And the sad truth is I'm probably slightly more likely to get pop culture references from the 1940s than I am from uh, the 21st century. Though, so kind of depends on the reference. Finally, I got a postcard, and these are always cool when they come into the P.O. Box, uh, from April, who's a Patreon uh, sponsor. And it begins, hello, uh, Deutschland. And I am sorry if I mangled that. From a Patreon subscriber and fan of the great detectives of old time radio. Uh, and uh, the postcard is of an anti-aircraft uh, gun during the war era. And she writes, this postcard made me think about the war podcast you did. As well as think about what was on people's minds uh, during a fair amount of time back then. The time period of old time radio certainly was a challenging one. Keep up the good work, April. Well, thanks so much, April, and I appreciate uh, the postcard, and uh, it's a very neat picture. And the war is one of those projects, uh, I'm really happy with it, and it's one of those things that was uh, a real pleasure and honor to do. And if you're into the history of World War II, or want to learn more about it, uh, do check it out at thewar.greatdetectives.net. And uh, what April said about old-time radio is true. In fact, if it weren't for the war, the decline of the golden age of radio would have happened a lot sooner. Because many of the uh, mechanical and electronic uh, requirements of television were already in place in the late 30s. And there were already a small amount of television broadcasts that had already uh, gone out. 
However, the progress of television really was stopped until after the war. So radio's life and prominence really were extended by that. At any rate, thanks for the postcard. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie. And then next Wednesday, it's another episode of Richard Diamond. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of